Today we are going to show you how to install a marine amplifier onto your boat. Now every single boat install will be a little different as no two boats are the same, but the tips and tricks shown in this video will apply to almost all marine amp installations. First let's talk about the tools required for this install. You're going to want to have a good wire cutter for cutting all of the wires to the appropriate lengths and for stripping the ends of wires so you can attach them to your battery and into the terminals of your amplifiers. You will be dealing with wires of different gauges between the speaker wires, power and ground lines, and remote lines, so make sure you pick a wire cutter that can cut through multiple different gauges. You're also going to want a power drill. This is a good tool to have around in case you need to drill any holes to run cables through and also when it comes time to mount your amplifier. You're also going to want to have some electrical tape or zip ties. This just helps to keep the install nice and clean. We recommend the use of zip ties to keep the wires nice and tight together. And also electrical tape helps to keep all of the electrical connections secure and safe from the elements. Another great tool to have is Allen keys. Most of the terminals you will be connecting to on your amplifier will either use Allen keys or a screwdriver. So make sure to have a set of Allen keys and a screwdriver or check the box your amplifier came with to see if one is included. We also recommend getting a wiring kit and maybe even a specific marine wiring kit, which we have at rockvilleaudio.com, with thick gauge power and ground lines as you are going to need all of the specific wiring, which we will get to later in this video. Now that you have all of the tools and wires you'll need for this install, let's quickly outline how the install is going to go. The overall install is pretty straightforward. We are going to be running five sets of wires, power, ground, remote line, RCA cables, and speaker wires. The power and ground wire are going to be run from your boat's battery terminals all the way to the plus 12 volt and ground terminals of your amplifier. Now most boats have two batteries or more. You will be connecting the power and ground lines to the 12 volt house battery, which you can find in your boat's owner manual or by contacting your boat's manufacturer. We will also be running an inline fuse between the battery and the power wire, which came with our wiring kit. You can also purchase one separately. The remote line is going to be run from the back of your head unit receiver to the remote terminal on your amplifier. The RCA cables are going to also be run from the back of your head unit or receiver through the RCA outputs into the RCA inputs on your amplifier. This is what brings the music signal from your receiver to your amplifier. And finally, the speaker wires are going to be run from the speaker wire terminals of your amplifier to wherever you designate that your speakers or subs are going to be installed. Now in our case, we are actually doing a multi-amp installation with a four channel amp to power our speakers and another mono block amplifier to power a marine subwoofer. Instead of having to run two sets of power wires and two sets of ground wires, we use something called a distribution block, which is just a splitter. We are able to run one power and ground wire from the boat's battery into the distribution blocks and then run wires from the distribution blocks to each of the amplifiers. Now that we have a good idea of what needs to be done in the install, let's get to running the wires. Make sure the battery is turned off before performing the installation. We are going to start with the power and ground lines. Measure the distance from where the house battery is in your boat to where you will be keeping your amplifier. Once you have figured out that distance, cut your thick gauge power and ground line to the appropriate length. Your power line is going to get attached to the positive terminal of your battery and the ground line is going to get attached to the negative terminal of your battery. To make this easier, you can strip some wire on both the power and ground wires and add ring terminals to the ends like this. Then you can run those rings over the battery terminals and fasten them down. We also added our inline fuse here between the battery and our positive wire. The positive wire connected to the positive terminal of the battery goes straight into the inline fuse and the other end of the power line goes into the positive 12 volt terminal on your amplifier. Make sure there is no exposed wire and make sure that you lock it into place with the Allen key fully so there is no loose connections. And the ground wire goes into the ground terminal. Again, make sure there is no loose wires or exposed wires that could cause sparking. Now again, since we were doing a multi-amp installation, we ran our power and ground wires from our battery into our distribution blocks and then ran those power and ground lines from each distribution block into each of our amplifiers. But now it's time to run our remote line. We are running our remote wire from the back of our head unit receiver to the remote terminal of our amplifier. This remote line ensures that the amps will turn on and off when the head unit is on. This helps to prevent the amplifier from draining your battery. 
make sure you tightly secure the remote line into your amplifier because if the remote line is not in securely, the amp will not turn on. Now, in our case, we had to run two remote lines, one for each of our amplifiers. Next, we are going to run the RCA cables from the RCA outputs of our receiver to the RCA inputs of our amplifier. A quick warning, if you plug the RCA cables into the outputs of your amplifier, you will not get any sound. You must plug them into the RCA inputs of your amplifier. You also want to make sure to run the RCA cables on the opposite side away from your power and ground lines so you do not get any noise in your signal. Next we are going to run our speaker wires. For the speaker wire we are going to first connect our white speaker wires to the speaker wire terminals on the amplifier locking them into place with an allen key. Another thing you want to do is watch out for polarity when you are wiring and double check to make sure your positive speaker wire is going into the positive speaker terminal on your amplifier and that the negative speaker wire is going into the negative speaker terminal on your amplifier. The positive wire usually either has a marking or words printed onto the side of the wire so you can differentiate which side is which. Then we are going to take the other end of our speaker wire and run it straight into our speakers, again making sure to run the positive side into the positive terminal of our speaker and the negative speaker wire into the negative terminal of our speakers. At this point you can set the gains and crossovers on your amplifier or amplifiers. We have separate dedicated videos to show you how to do this, so make sure you check those out. The last step is to just mount your amplifier. Now for our installation, we decided that we would put our amps in this compartment over here on our boat, which will keep the amps safe from any water damage, etc. We also decided to mount both of our amplifiers onto a board, which we just decided to do this because it'll make swapping out amplifiers much easier to do in the future. But you can really mount your amplifiers anywhere you think they will remain dry and safe from the elements. Using our screw gun and the included Phillips mounting screws that came with our amplifiers, we mounted the amplifiers to the board and we also decided to mount our distribution blocks for a cleaner install so we could easily follow the wiring. And once we had everything on our board, we placed it inside of the compartment and our installation was now complete. So hopefully this video showed you how easy it is to install an amplifier into your boat. But if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. And be sure to check out the rest of the videos in our boat installation series. We'll see you guys in the next one.